Hello once again and welcome back. Um, firstly, just a reminder that before these Back to Basics tutorials, I'd already completed a, a set of tutorials before. It's a different format. For those ones, I used a whiteboard and hand wrote the words. But the nice thing is that I've got my wife to do all the speaking parts. So instead of having to put up with my, my bad tones and bad pronunciation, you can actually listen to a native speaker. So there they are if you want to go and have a look. And today I'm going to be introducing two new vowels. They're important vowels, the ones written here. I've just written them before the zero consonant. They, they are always written before the initial consonant. This one's called Sara A, and this one's called Sara E. The name comes from the basic sounds of the vowel. And this one can be transliterated a couple of different ways, depending on the sound. I'll go into that later. And this one, to, to an English speaker, it has an air sound, like A-I-R. But the transliteration system normally transliterates it as A-E. And I've mentioned this before, that I've come across lots of evidence that Germans were involved with the transliteration system because there are many things that make sense to a German speaker but not an English speaker. So if a German speaker sees an A followed by an E, they know that that's an umlaut A, which has like an air sound, which is fairly similar. But to an English speaker, if you try to think of a word that has an A followed by an E, it's quite difficult. Uh, there aren't that many, I, I can't even think of any. The only one I can think of is the actress Mae West, who spelt her name M-A-E. She spelt it that way, but it was actually pronounced May, M-A-Y. So if, if you're still relying on transliteration and you see A-E, it's supposed to make an air sound. It's supposed to be this vowel. This vowel is fairly consistent in the way it's pronounced. This one isn't, and I'll go into that in a minute. But as I say, the, the, the basic way of pronouncing it is just an A, like an A-Y in English, may, hey, or say. So the first word here, um, we have the Sarah A vowel and the Georgian initial consonant and no final consonant, J. Uh, which is vegetarian or vegetarian food. Second word, um, gorgai, the sara u, and this this one we haven't done yet, but it's uh, it's called your ying, and as a, a final consonant, it makes an n sound, so gun. And then the second syllable, we've got the the air er vowel again followed by Georgian, so that makes a a j sound rather than J. So gunje, which means key in Thai. This next word, uh, the Sara A and what Wan is the first syllable, so way. And then the second syllable is the lower ling L consonant and the long R vowel, way la, which means time. Here, again, a word without a, a final consonant. It's just got the, the Sara E vowel and the more Ma M initial consonant. And I'm, I'm going to get into tones fairly soon, but this one's got a falling tone. So, you know, you need to put energy into the front of the word, then it drops off. So, Me, which means mother. This word here, um, oh, I haven't put the uh, translation. That's a little omission on my part. But to, to, to han is a, t, a t consonant, then the short a vowel, ta is the first syllable, then the sara a, and lo ling, lei, ta lei. That actually means sea in Thai, as in ocean. And this word here, very similar to, to this word, uh, same falling tone. But the initial consonant is the ro which we did before, which is the R consonant. And again, it's like that falling tone. So, re, it means mineral. And if you go into 7-Eleven and see bottles of mineral water, 
it would say, nah, I'm rare. Sometimes you will see these vowels used in combination with this symbol. And I haven't done Thai numerals yet, but this symbol is the same as a Thai eight. So the vowel goes before the initial consonant and the symbol is written above the consonant. And this is sometimes called a, a vowel shortening symbol. So when it's used with this vowel, it sort of turns the, the A sound into just like an English E. I'll give you some examples in a minute and that should um, help you un understand what I mean. And with the sara e, it sort of just turns it into like an English A, as in, as in cat. So this first word here, we see the sara e and we also see that symbol, just like an English E. The initial consonant is the whole heap H and the final consonant is the nor nu N. So it's basically H E N, hen, which means to see. This word is similar, but the initial consonant is the ba bla, which has a sound between a B and a P, ben. And that's one of the Thai verbs to be. This word here, we see again, we've got the, that vowel and that symbol. The initial consonant is the to tao, which has a, a sound between an English D and a T. And the final consonant is the more ma, which has an M sound. Dem, which it means full, full. And then this word, um, po pla, is the initial consonant. And to dek is the final consonant, which has a final consonant, has an unreleased T sound, so bet, which means duck. And this, this vowel isn't always consistent. Um, with this word here, we, we don't have that symbol above the, the initial consonant. So it, it should make an A sound. So this is lo, lo ling, initial consonant, and nor no, final consonant. So it should really be lane, but it's not. It, it's pronounced like len, like to, to play. And when, we, when I did some consonant clusters the other day, I said I didn't agree with the Thai transliteration of steak because steak has got an A vowel, so it doesn't need this symbol. And with that symbol, it becomes sedek. But I, I don't agree, but that's the standard Thai transliteration of steak. Now over here, um, I've done my, my own transliterations. And what you will often find is that this sara air is just transliterated as an A, but it doesn't make an A sound, it makes an air sound. So if I try to transliterate cat, just using that vowel, it really makes a sound like ket, which isn't cat. But if I add this symbol to that vowel, it then gets closer to the English cat. And that's the, the best way using this vowel and this symbol of transliterating an English A when you, when you have a word that has um, a final consonant. With Thai words that don't have a final consonant, this vowel combination makes an, like a short at sound but it's only used with words that have an initial consonant without a final consonant. So this, this word, lat, means and. It's only used in written, like formal Thai. Uh, when Thai speak, they, they don't use that word. And in Thailand, there's a, a big cash and carry store called Mackerel. And if, if they didn't use that symbol in the transliteration, it will become sort of mer mercrol. But the transliteration is actually quite good for macro. They, they do use this symbol. So the, the sound in Thai gets a lot closer to the English macro. I actually have a, a photo of this, but I'll show you in a minute. Now for a few real world examples using real world fonts, because eventually you'll have to get used to real world fonts. Uh, this is two words, you actually see this a lot in Thailand. So the, the first syllable of the first word, 
gogai, and then the long ah vowel, ga. And then we have the, the sara e vowel, followed by one of the f consonants uh, for, for fun. So ga fe, which means coffee in Thailand. And the, the second word is the, the so su, the f, one of the s consonants. Uh, there's no written vowel, so we have to sort of add a, a short O and the Dordek final consonant, which makes an unreleased T sound as a final consonant. So, 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 gafe, so, so, gafe is coffee and so is fresh. This font is really difficult, but it amused me because I've got a bit of a, uh, an unusual sense of humour. But Harry Potter, it was just as popular in Thailand as it, as it was in every other country. And with the um, Thai transliteration, they've just transliterated the A in Harry using this Sara E, and they, they haven't used that little symbol above to, to shorten the vowel. So the actual Thai pronunciation of this word uses the Sara E is more like sort of hairy possa rather than Harry Potter. So I guess um, Daniel Radcliffe must be quite hirsute. This is a real world sign of one of the words I just did in those examples. Quite difficult to read, but learning to read Thai is like a two-stage process. Initially, you use books and you might use internet resources like mine where I use standard fonts and you get to recognize the standard fonts and you go out into the real world and they use all these really weird fonts and you have to start you know, recognizing the, uh, the weird fonts as well. And that, that takes quite a, quite a while, but um, it's just something you have to go through. So just two, just two letters, a vowel and a consonant. So this, this vowel here is actually the, the Sara A. There's, there's no loop, but that's what it is. And this one here, sort of a bit like a backward English F, is actually the, the Georgian. Again, there's no loop. So this says J, and um, every year in, in certain parts of Thailand, in Phuket and where I am in, in Hat Yai, there's a big um, Chinese vegetarian festival. So there's lots of uh, streets, street vendors that sell only vegetarian food. And many of the shops for that, for that period of the festival, they will, they will stop their usual menu and just serve vegetarian food. So if, you, if you're into vegetarian food, this is a sign you need to look out for. This is something else I've also spoken about previously. Um, with the Thai restaurants, there's sort of two, two main categories of restaurant. So there's the Ahan Tam Sang, which is like you know, the food to follow order. So they, you know, they basically cook what you want to order. And there are these Khao Gang restaurants. So in, in the morning, they will just make big trays of, you know, of different types of curry. So they, you don't tell them what you want, you just choose what they've already made. And um, so that, that's known as Khao Gang. So this sign here, uh, cow with a, a falling tone is, is rice and then the, the second word means curry so we've got the sara e which gives you that air sound the initial consonant is gorgai and then the final consonant is the ngongu the the ng uh, consonant so gang so basically rice curry uh 20 to 25. so uh, the way the way this works is that you you, you get a plate with some rice on, and then you can choose any number of um, curries in, in the tray. And depending on how many you choose, it's a different price. But it's normally a, a very cheap way to eat. And in the past, I've, I've, like before I was married with kids, when I, when I used to um, have some freedom and travel around, I used to get bus tickets to like, you know, distant places. and. If it was a very long journey, the bus ticket might include a meal as well. So you'd stop at one of these cow gang places, and you could have you could um, have a meal there. So it's a really cheap way to eat. 
This is another real world sign using a word that I just did in one of the examples. So the, the, the top word just says rub sum up, which basically means hiring when, when a company is looking for staff. And then underneath that, they'll list the, the people they want. And this is the word that we just saw in the examples. Uh, Sara air and the mama m initial consonant and a tone mark. It's got a falling tone, so meh, mother. And this word here, I've got the bo by my the, the b initial consonant, uh, the long sara a vowel, and then the no no final consonant. Ban, meh, ban, um, like house mother, and that's the the Thai meaning for maid. As I think I said before, I taught myself to read, uh, basically just getting some theory in textbooks and then going out on the street and then trying to read everything I could. And that's a habit that I, I, I found difficult to break, so I, I still read as much as I can. And when I see words that have been transliterated from English, most of them are terrible transliterations. Uh, some I agree with, and this is one I agree with. This is one of the words we just did in the examples. It's the, the, the word from macro, the, um, the cash and carry store. So here you, you see the, the sara air and that vowel shortening symbol to make it more like an, an English A, so more ma, uh, initial consonant, first syllable. Final consonant of the first syllable is the ko kwai, so mac. And then this, this vowel we haven't done yet, it makes an O sound, written before the initial consonant. And the initial consonant is actually a consonant cluster. So a ko kwai, and ro rua, kr sound, kro, mac, kro. And here's the final real world example. It's a, a shop selling cheap things. And there's actually three words. So the, the, the first word, we've got the ko kai, the K consonant. The, the long sara a followed by the yo yak y consonant, which makes like a long i sound. So kai, it's, it's actually got a rising tone. Uh, and we get onto tones fairly soon, pro probably in the next tutorial. Kai, so sell. And this word here has got a, a falling tone. It's the um, sara i vowel, then the mo ma initial consonant, no final consonant. Mai. And it means um, not, no, it ne negates something. And the final word is the sara e, then the uh, po pan uh, initial consonant and the ngo ngo final consonant, pang, which means expensive. So sell, not expensive. It sells cheap things. One more point, and this is very important. In Thai, there are quite a few vowel combinations. I'll be going through some later. And many use that sara a vowel as the first vowel in the combination. So when you see that vowel, it doesn't automatically mean that it makes an A sound because it may not be used on its own. It may be part of a longer vowel combination. So you need to sort of look ahead a bit and see if there's any other vowels. Anyway, uh, don't worry about that too much at the moment. That's something that I'll go through in a later tutorial. Thank you for watching, liking, subscribing, all of that good stuff. If you have any comments, questions or other feedback, please leave them below and more videos soon.